Let's get in the spooky spirit by making some miniature Halloween decorations for a dollhouse. These are really easy and quick to make. I designed these Halloween printables that are available on my website as well as on Etsy and the links are down below in the description. All you have to do is press download, print, and cut them out. To print this out, I use the HP Envy Inspire printer. I will also be using these Halloween slices of polymer clay as miniature candy and I'm going to fill them up into all of these jars. All the supplies that I am using in this video are also linked down below in the description. I sorted the clay slices into some fun color combinations and then placed them inside the jars. Polymer clay slices are really great to use as miniature candy because they look so realistic and they add such a cute touch to your dollhouse. For all the remaining decorations that I'll make, I'll be using these printables which are available down below in the description. From these, I'm going to make some miniature wrapping paper rolls. And you can use this paper to create anything you want. It doesn't have to be wrapping paper. You can even make some miniature bags and boxes as well as miniature cards from these paper designs. I'm wrapping this paper around a paintbrush to get it all rolled up so it'll look like a roll of wrapping paper. I did the same thing to the other paper that I want to use as miniature wrapping paper. To stop the paper from unraveling, I'm going to tighten the roll and then I'm going to apply just a little bit of glue on the edge and then hold it for a few seconds so that the glue can hold the rest of the paper in place and so it'll dry slowly. For my decorations, I'm going to just make one more so I'm going to have a total of three wrapping paper rolls. I'm also using a toothpick to spread out the glue as thin as possible because this will prevent the paper from wrinkling as it dries. Next, I'll show you how to make the miniature Halloween bags. And I start off just by cutting some of the bags individually and cutting them along the solid line. And then make folds everywhere there is a dotted line. This includes the really small flaps on the bottom and on the sides. It's important to pre-fold all of the flaps before you start gluing anything down. After making all of the folds, I then do a test fit to make sure that everything fits in place before I apply any of the glue. Because sometimes you might need to adjust the folds depending on if you accidentally folded over one of the dotted lines. And now that I see that it fits, I'm adding small amounts of glue using a toothpick. I'm also adjusting the flaps at the very bottom using the toothpick to fold them out a little bit more so that when I fold over the bag, it'll go directly against the flaps with the glue. I'm folding the bag now over each of the flaps one by one, and it's important to do this very slowly. Don't rush this so you don't end up messing up or getting glue all over the place. So I'm gluing one of the sides down to the flaps and just holding it down for a few seconds just so that the glue adheres to both sides of the paper. And then once I'm done with that, I'll glue down the front of the bag to the smaller flap and then hold it down for a few seconds. And then I'm adding glue to the side flap so that I can fold the last remaining side of the bag over. And once that dries, your miniature trick-or-treat bag is ready to use. Next up are these miniature Halloween boxes. These are great to use just by themselves as decorations or you can fill them up with some treats. I cut out the little spider box as well as the one with the spider web since I thought that would be a really cute matching pair. And then just as with the bags, I'm folding all of the sides and flaps along the dotted line. And then I added small amounts of glue onto the flaps and then I'm 
folding down the sides of the boxes onto the flaps and then holding it down for a few seconds so that the glue can adhere to the paper. First box is done. It is fully closed, so I can't reopen up the box, but the next box that I'm making, I'm not going to glue down the top flap so that I can open it and put anything I want inside. And I'm going to just continue folding all of the flaps along the dotted line. If you find it hard to fold straight lines, I recommend using a ruler. So all you do is just place a ruler underneath the dotted line and then just fold the paper over it and you'll get a perfectly clean, crisp fold each time. And now the box is ready to be glued down. I'm only going to add glue to the side flaps and not the top one. So I'm just adding small amounts of glue and then holding it down. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the flaps in the back as well. Then I'm just going to set the box aside so that the glue can fully dry. And I'm going to leave this last flap open. I'm not going to glue it down so that the box can be reopened and closed. And that way you can fill it up with anything that you want, such as miniature candy, donuts, or little treats for your dollhouse. Next, I'm going to make some miniature Halloween posters. I have an entire sheet of so many cute designs to choose from. For these, the instructions are so simple. You just pick out which one you like and just cut it out along the lines. I did include borders around some of them, so they make a great frame for these posters. So you can choose if you want to cut out each of these posters with the color frame around it, or you can completely cut it out. So if you didn't want this orange frame, you can completely cut off the orange frame and put your own frame around it, or put some colorful scrapbook paper behind it as well. These make really great wall decorations inside of a dollhouse. You can also glue them onto a piece of wood so that they can be a decoration outside your dollhouse or place them inside of a cabinet as well. I also have over 60 designs of miniature Halloween cards. These are also super easy to make. All you have to do is cut them out and fold them and that's it. In the printables, I also included some miniature envelopes in case you want to place some of the Halloween cards inside the envelopes. So all you have to do is just cut them out along the solid line and then afterwards you will fold the flaps along the dotted line. Using a toothpick, I am applying a small amount of glue to the sides of the flaps and then I will fold over the bottom flap over the side flaps. And you don't want to add too much glue because then you'll end up gluing the flaps to the back of the envelope. So just lightly press it against the two flaps. And this way your miniature cards will still fit inside I'm placing a toothpick inside the envelope just to make sure that the flaps did not get glued down to the very back of the envelope. And just to do a test fit, I'm placing one of the miniature cards inside and that looks so cute inside. It's ready to be mailed off. And now I'm going to make some of these miniature Happy Halloween banners to get the party started. And I'm cutting each of the letters out individually. This part is a bit tedious, but it'll be worth it in the end. And there are many colors to choose from. So if you want, you can mix and match the colors, but I'm just going to do them all in the color black. One tip that I recommend is to cut out the tops and bottoms first before cutting out the sides. That way you can do all of 
the tops and bottoms at once. Once all of the letters are cut out, I'm going to fold each of them in half. To create a hanging banner, I'm grabbing some white sewing thread and then I'm adding a little bit of glue on the inside flaps of each of the letters and then I'm going to fold it over the thread. And then I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure to both of the paper sides so that it can be fully glued down. And then I'm going to continue that same process over and over again until all of the letters are glued down. I decided I wanted the word happy and the word Halloween on two separate banners so that I can stack them on top of each other. So I am going to glue them down on two separate pieces of thread. And here's how the two banners look. I do think it would look really cute if I did them in two different colors as well. I also have some of these banners with some adorable Halloween designs, so I thought they would be really cute to add towards the ends of each of the banners. So I cut out some of them and then glued them down to the ends. And next I'm going to make some 3D bat decorations for the wall. So I'm just cutting out each of the little tiny bats individually. And I'm cutting them out so that there isn't any white in the background. To create a 3D effect, I'm going to fold the bat's wings. So you want to fold them towards you. And then that way, when you place them on the wall, it'll look like the bats are flying and that they are 3D. And now I'm going to make some miniature spell books and Halloween themed books. So I'm cutting out the white pages as well as the book covers. I chose the covers that I wanted to use for my miniatures and then cut each of them out and then I'm folding them along the dotted line. And to create the page inserts, I am just taking this long strip of white paper and then folding it along the dotted lines, just like how you would fold a fan. So you want it to be in a zigzag pattern. Then check to make sure that it fits inside of the book cover. And now I'm going to apply some glue on the very middle part of the book cover since I don't want to glue down the pages to the book cover. And the last item that I'm making is a plate of miniature cookies. So this is easy. I'm just choosing out the little pumpkin clay slices. Now this is my favorite part is putting it all together. So let's get this Halloween party started and start adding things to our shelves. I also love using purple as a Halloween and fall color. I know orange and black are the main Halloween colors, but purple is a fun way to spice up those Halloween colors. That's also why I decided to paint this cabinet purple. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys think of using purple as a Halloween color. 
And also let me know which of these items is your favorite that I made in this video. To hang the bats on the wall, I just rolled up a small piece of tape and then I'm taping it directly on the center of each of the bats and then I'm going to press them onto the wall.